My name is Niklas. I'm CTO of the Swedish company Adtoma. I'm going to talk about how we build our software called Fusion, what decision we took and why. Hopefully I can give you some advice on what to think about when building new applications and selecting new technologies. And in the end, I hope I will give you the answer if you can make more money faster selecting a NoSQL rather than a traditional SQL database. So, we're working with ad serving. So what's up with that? Isn't that just showing a randomly selected static image on a web page? Well, that was true maybe in the beginning of the internet era, but that's not so today. Why is building ad serve application costly and complex? Let's look at a typical workflow to start with. You have a publisher, in this case I used Washington Post as an example, that published the media content online, and on those pages they want to show editorial messages. Then we have the advertisers that want to buy inventory from the publisher to show their, their ad message on the pages. They, they, they can then buy directly from the publisher or they can use an agency. Agencies often bulk buy inventory from the publisher to get better offers. And then the publisher uses one or several systems to publish the editorial messages on their web page. <coughs> and the number of visitors can be quite substantial. It's not uncommon that a publisher has up to 1,000 visitors per second on their home page, and that gives you 2.6 billion page views per month. And given that you have five or 10 ad spaces, you multiply that and get 10 to 20 billion ad impressions per month on a single page. And for each and every one of those ad impressions, we try to do as much investigation about the viewer as possible. We try to find out where he's been before prior entering this page, we try to find out the third-party plugins that are supported. And if possible, we try to profile the user to find out genders and so on. I'm just going to give you a quick history and information about the company and myself, just so you will understand why we took certain decisions. Atoma is a provider of a complete ad serve solution. And it was founded by alumnus from DoubleClick. And DoubleClick was later bought by Google. And Google is, as you're all aware, a small and tender competitor. In the beginning, Atoma offered ad serving solution from a company called Checkmate. But we started to develop our own product in 2007. And that's when I was hired as a CTO for the company to build this new application. We released the pilot in the same year. We have customers worldwide, and we serve more than 18 billion ad impressions through the system today. Uh, that's a rather old figure. I, I think we're around 20 to 25 billion ad impressions today. What do I know about making complex application using data persistence? I've been a developer since the mid-90s. I always worked with object-oriented databases, persistent storage in SQL, in some way, I developed complex business intelligence systems, warehouse systems, retail systems, prior to entering the ad serving business. And I worked with the traditional solutions as SQL Server, Sybase, and Lotcom, and so on. I also have experiences from using data mining databases like Vertica and ClickView. And lately, I've become experienced in NoSQL and NewSQL databases. OK, so back to the product. What was it that we set out to do back in 07? We wanted to replace the current ad serving solution with a much faster and much easier to use application. We wanted to be able to use high quality algorithms, not just to select the perfect ad for, for the current visitor, but also to forecast the future. And that means we need to use a huge amount of historic data to project into the future. We would like to deliver at least 15 billion ad impressions per month and server. And we wanted to simplify the user interface to make the complex become more easy for the user to understand. <coughs> and we, I, I said that 
normal publisher uses five to ten different systems to do the whole workflow for delivering ads online. And we wanted to make that possible to do with just one single system. And that means that the system needs to handle customers, orders, proposals, inventory, reservations, finance like invoices and so on, and also reporting and business intelligence. And we wanted to do this with a limited time to the market. And that is really crucial because we had a very small budget to start with. The most important part of an ad serving solution is, of course, delivering the ads. If you don't deliver an ad, the publisher loses their revenue stream, and that means that we will get no money either. And there's a lot of requirements to consider when delivering ads, not just that you cannot accept in a downtime at any moment. We need to try to find out who is the current viewer. Let's keep the diapers commercial away from the bachelor sitting at home eating pizza and looking at NBA sports. It's been shown before. Maybe it's time to show another, the same editorial message, but use another image than we've shown prior to this view. What technology is supported? Can we show flash ads, or do we need to stick to static images? Should we apply frequency capping? We might just be allowed to show this ad twice an hour or maximum 10 times a day for a unique visitor. And also, we might need to re apply some retargeting. And that means that we need to try to find out the browsing history of the current user. So if you browse a lot of sport pages, we will increase the possibility for you to show <coughs> sports-related ads. And most important to the publisher, which ad brings the most cost-effective view at any time? Let's try to keep the margin as high as possible. And to be able to deliver and make reservations in the future, we need to try to forecast the future and try to predict how many visitors will it be at any time. Try to figure out how many page view a page will have in the future, just trying to find out how many times will this be viewed to any user at all. That's, that's kind of easy. But we need to be able to filter down using key values. So to start with, we project the future using a huge amount of historic data. And on top of that, we apply curves to adjust to the season of the year, adjust to Christmas time or holidays or whatever there might be. We might also need to adjust to a specific event, like the finals of American Idol or something like that. And then we need to be able to find out how many, how lot inventory there will be for specific key values. That means apply the frequency cap rules as I spoke about. Try to find out how many unique visitors there will be in the future. We might just get paid per unique visitor. How many females will there be visiting the pages in the future? We might just want to target a specific gender. And also, we might need to target an ad to someone that's searched for the word iPhone on eBay. How many of those there will there be in the future? Also, we need to try to find out how many will support third-party plugins like Flash. And then we also need to be able to target an ad to a specific geolocation. Maybe we just want to show the ad in California or San Jose only. And not only that, there's close to infinite ways to combine these key values. So there's a huge amount of data to investigate at all times. I went deep into the hard drive on my computer and I found the very earliest sketches set out by the founders. They wanted us to implement a heat map to show what inventory would be available in the future and also view the current orders that was in the system. The competitor system showed the same information using huge amount of, or not huge amount, but a list of data tables that you need to look through, finding values that could figure from 10 to 10 billion in the same column, which makes it e very hard to find the information that you need. And they set a really tough requirement for us. 
you should be able to load this heat map in just a few seconds. So we started to work with that and tried to pack as much information as we could on the x and y axis and then use the coloring of the heat map as a third dimension. One big problem though is that each and every cell in this heat map is based upon thousands and thousands of counters on which we need to apply forecasting. So could we be able to do this in just a few seconds? We could if we could find a database vendor that would make our server side really fast. And I said we had very limited funding to start with, so we need to have a very cost-effective development, short timeline to the market, and then use as few developers as possible. So we need very easy to learn APIs. A very uncomplex development environment, and as few points of failure as possible. And that basically means that we need as few lines of code as possible. We wanted to be able to serve as an ASP solution as well as license models. And we also wanted to be able to run the complete solution on a single developer's computer. And we wanted to use a finely granulated object model. So we need performance for that. And using a traditional SQL database definitely need, leads to negative performance hits using finely granulated object models. We looked at the options. We could try and use a traditional SQL database. They have their advantages. They are well tested, well verified. There won't be that many surprises during the development. And we would be able to set a very accurate timeline for the project. Although it would probably not be a short timeline, but it would be pretty accurate. And the disadvantage is that it would be costly. On top of licenses, we would need to hire a database administrator. And the development time would be longer because we need to implement source codes in more than one area. We need to implement database schemas, application code, and then some layer in between to translate between the different layers. We can also try and find a mix of technologies. Let's try to find a vendor that's best suited for the ad deliveries and another vendor best suited for the back office feature functionality and then maybe a third one to support the data mining and reporting. Or we could try and find one vendor that would suit all our needs. If we should go by the traditional route, we then need to start by implementing object model in .NET or Java define the database schemas, make a layer in between to translate between the different layers, and try to get performance by scaling up the hardware. And we also need to, in each and every upgrade and patch, we need to upgrade both the database and application code in parallel. Educating developers will take more time, and that leads to scaling development department will be much harder. Let's look into some so example code. In this case, I've used MySQL and Hibernate if we should select the traditional solution. We then would need to define the database schema where we would define data names, property names, tables, relations, data types, and so on. And then we need a layer to translate between the database and application. And of course, we need the application itself. Here we will once again define property names, data types, relations, and so on. And hopefully we'll use a good pattern to implement them pretty similar in the database scheme and application. There's a lot of code just to do a simple task in the system. In our previous slides, we had all used traditional SQL databases. So we disregarded that solution and wanted to try to find a no SQL or new SQL solution to use in our application. <clears throat> what we were looking for were a database that would support the performance in the ad deliveries and the performance for the back office functionality with inventory and forecasting and so forth. 
as little hassle as possible during development. We would like to avoid database schemas in whole. And of course, scalability and performance, even though we would choose to implement using fine granulated object models. Now it's time to try to find a vendor that could hold our hands during this project. We were looking for a scalable and reliable database. Even if the performance is fantastic, we cannot lose data at any moment. And as I said, we cannot accept downtime in the ad deliveries at any time. We want the database to update the database schemas using the program data classes, properties, and fields. And of course, easy to use API and a huge amount of performance. We looked into the market, and there's quite a few good ones out there. Among a few notable that we tested were Matisse, Fast Objects, db 4 Objects, Star Counter, and quite a few others. We ended up selecting Star Counter, mainly due to that Star Counter offers really high performance for transactional data. They can handle more than 500,000 transactions per second and CPU core. <coughs> it scales really well. You can run the same server on your developer's computer as you do on your main server. It has full ACID support, so we don't risk losing any data. It works in memory, but it stores and secures the persistence by writing transaction logs on disk. And there is no database schema. You just inherit one class in Star Counter, and that's where you end your database programming. So we should look at the same example as we did with MySQL and Hibernate, using Star Counter API instead. How would that look like? To start with, we have no separate database schema at all. Hence, we will need no traversion layer, you just do your application code. And it's a very neat and tidy solution. Even the best of developers tend to add more bugs the more lines of code there is. Or well, that might, might just be me, sorry. <coughs> now we selected technology and vendor. We set out the following timeline for the project. We wanted to spend as long time on specifying and experimenting with the technology as the actual implementation and testing itself. We gave ourselves six months to implement and do the testing before the pilot. And looking at the staff timeline, it pretty much matched what we set out to do. Finding four skilled developers proved to be much harder than we expected, but educating them went really fast. And then we used Agile Scrum methodology to reach the pilot, and we released the pilot in December of 07. And that pilot had both ad deliveries and back office functionalities. We did one crazy decision. We had the opportunity to run one of the largest media houses in Sweden as the pilot. I would recommend that you use a smaller vendor or customer than the largest one. They were willing to take a small risk to get a better solution for the ad deliveries and for the salespeople. And in the end, we succeeded with the implementation. We worked 36 hours straight for tweaking and fixing the algorithms for ad deliveries, fixing bugs and so on. If you look at the infrastructure that we used for the pilot, and that is that is basically the same as we use today. We have the back office where we handle inventory, forecasting, orders, invoices, and so on. And that service is available as an ASP service. System users and administrators can access the back office server using HTML5. Well, not in 07 because we didn't have HTML5 then. Or they can use WPF. And then we have the front-end service that handles all the ad deliveries. They are multiplied not due to that StarCounter can't handle the pressure. It's more that Windows handles 
network connections rather poorly, and we need several fallbacks. And this serves the ads to the actual web browser users. And at their sites, we try to run scripts and cookies and try to find out as much as possible about them. And of course, they are just happy to see all the ads. Did we reach the goal? We deliver more than 12 billion ad impressions per month and for a customer. We can run all our customers on a single server. We store counter data per hour on multiple levels throughout the system. We have a very user-friendly interface and very low server hardware requirements. And we have a short timeline to the market and we used very few developers. So I would say that we succeeded and exceeded expectations. We implemented the heat map and added a few add-ons. The user uses this, the same user component to see what's been occupied in the inventory and also make new reservations. The salesperson can use the system talking to the customers on the phone, make the reservations, put the ad online while the customers are still on the phone. And to my knowledge, there's no other competitor today that do that. Stability and uptime, that's really important. We have more than 99.999% uptime in the front-end servers. And they could be 100% if we didn't have a major power blackout during a thunderstorm in the hosting service. And of course, the UPS failed at this very moment. So the lesson learned was to have a UPS for that UPS. And we have a service level of more than 99.99% in the back office server. And the only downtime is during major upgrades and patches. We serve all kinds of ads, as you can imagine. The traditional st static placements, corner folding ads, or other interactive ads where the system user or the browser user needs to interact with editorial to see the message. Transparent layers, you can encapsulate your whole page. And of course, you can embed the editorial message in the video player. We serve to any device that's connected to the internet. It's PC, handhelds, Macintosh. We even serve in-app editorials. <coughs> I think I did this in record time. Do you have any questions? Can you show us one of the, how you write a query? Sorry, Dave? Can you show one of the samples that first? A sample of the code. Yes. Yeah, which one? The Hibernate or the Star Counter one? Star Counter one. There's actually very few lines of code. Or any specific thoughts about? Oh, the ring of just wondering. You say there's no schema, but I thought, let's see, if you have a business record, then you probably need some kind of like index. Yeah, you, you can hint. Where are you slice You can hint to Star Counter directly in the code that you want an index on a specific property, or you can add an index file and that will be loaded with the next reload of the database. So you can make hints to Star Counter what index to use to get performance. Oh, so you still can have yeah. any tools you can say. Yeah, try and use this. Yeah. But you don't define any separate schema. It's just the, the performance with the indexes. Because we don't implement the database schema and the code in between to translate between the layers. So instead of implementing three source codes for the same task, we just do one time. And it's just inheriting a base class in Star Counter, and then that, that's basically it. And it's really easy to educate developers using this, since they don't have to learn any. Well, it's good if they know SQL, but they don't need to know any specific database technologies. So. And also, for this kind of topic, this one is this each class has a corresponding physical file? Or no, everything is loaded into the database. 
And as I said, it works fully in memory, so they load everything into the memory with their own. I don't really know how they do it. But to, you don't get a file, per se. You get one database that's well, loaded into it. Isn't it isn't mean the file you just in the memory. It's not, you say, you know, it's a class, right? You have a public class, you have a class, you have a class, you have a class, and you have a class. So you can create a new one. Yeah. So how do you get stored? Uh, it's, they actually use the virtual objects that are created by the .NET engine. So they don't create separate objects. It's the same object as your program that's stored in the database. You can get much better information. Star Counter is uh, up in the exhibition. So if you want to go in depth there, they have the CTO is really good. So let's see. Then you probably have a need that you need to fix information, a piece of information from multiple uh, objects and uh, present it to the Yeah, they support SQL as a query language to find information. So you can use SQL and then you get a, a chunk of objects back from, from the SQL engine. So that's just a view or really it's, it's there, the two objects that you get. So you can query the objects, and then in the result set, you can, you can modify the objects with properties and fields directly in the result set. So the SQL is still used? The, the SQL language is used to fetch information. Does it be embedded in the Yeah, it's embedded. So I don't have a sample code to show you that, but it's, it's really simple. And the good thing is that you can query both on actual fields and then on, on properties that you have, like get and set properties in, in .NET. So you can query either one of them. Okay. Uh, thank you for listening. I will be around the exhibition if, if, if you want to talk some more and I will be up with the Star Counter guys. Thank you.